So I popped open YouTube as per my morning routine, and one of the first things I saw was Kamala Harris giving a speech, I guess yesterday was the 50th anniversary of Roe versus Wade, something like that. And so she gave a speech, which, which actually flowed well comparatively, and she misquoted the Constitution. Um, like instead, it says, we are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights that we can have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. She got rid of the part of the creator and life. So it was like, we are granted rights to pursue liberty and happiness. And like, it's, it was just such a, such a giant mess. There was also the, the March for Life that happened fairly recently with like 500,000 people. No one hears about that though. And it's good to pay attention to this stuff. And if you don't pay attention to this stuff, well, you wake up tomorrow in a gulag. And like, it, 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 that, that is historical. So as much as I can say you will have a much better peace of mind if you don't pay attention to politics, you need to pay attention a little bit. You need to bounce that off what you know is true and what is good and what is ideal and what is eternal. Because if you don't do that, the world will just eat you. That's the reality of the situation, and we've seen it happen multiple times in our history. So while I was mulling over that in my mind, I tried to think of the, the, the concept of self-consciousness. And a lot of this comes per Freud, but not really. The, the idea of, of sexuality, because I know Freud's kind of a, he's an interesting guy, but one of the things that I know secularism kept was the concept that you are just your sexuality and your sexual drive, and everything is all about that. That's like the highest possible thing you can possibly be. So I prefer, for me personally, prefer Carl Jung, because he puts, he at least studies the spiritual element of things, and he can find that in like everything. It's, it's pretty awesome. I strongly recommend him. Uh, I've only read his Red Book, and Carl Jung answers Job. So I'm not a scholar when it comes to Jung or anything like that, but but uh, like Carl Jung answers Job. Maybe I'll just go into that for a little bit at some point, but but not right now. But when you look at the the whole the attraction element um, for humanity, it's like the masculine, the man, the visual creature looks at the woman, sees she's beautiful, and this is in the Bible in Genesis. The 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 sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful, and then. Well, some interesting stuff happened. And that's a Genesis. But that's that's how you look at things. You see the you, the man looks at the woman. The woman either approves or disproves based on how she will see the future of the man. Because this is how you, you, juxt, you, you judge the genders, right? We, actually everybody, women even in their antisocial circles will will berate each other if they're having issues. Like, they'll, they'll destroy your past. And men, we will fight. So that's like destroying your future. And then we look at each other roughly the same way. A man will judge a woman by her innocence, beauty, and youth. And a woman will judge a man by, like, how, what is his potential moving forward? So that's that's a kind of a neat time thing where we judge each other. And out of that interaction, if it's done properly and they link together, is life. It's conscious life. And then the life will be grown up, hopefully reared, and shown how to act as whichever um, biology they're due to enact, and like male or female, and then they go from there and the, the cycle continues. So that's one of the ways that self-consciousness can emerge, through just life itself, look like having this sort of duality, like humanity looking at itself with self-consciousness. Maybe that's like a precondition for life to exist, or for, for knowing to exist, to have a point of reference in the middle. So that way you can at least see what's going on in the process. Like the, the one video yesterday, I've, sometimes I de tend to jump around in my mind, but the point I was trying to make is the reason why John Wick is top tier is because it shows it shows the middle. Yes, he wins, but it shows all the trials he had to go through and overcome, specifically pain, in order to get there. And it shows him in like a really more realistic sense, I think. That seems to work when it comes to self-consciousness. As long as there's an eternal absolute at the end, there is an end to time. If en if anything, entropy kind of proves that. At least time that we know of. And so if there's an absolute end, there's an absolute somewhere. But if we get rid of that, the concept of being an absolute deity, transcendent moral guide, something to reach for, you know, uh, uh, the same pattern that that is on every belief system or on every one of our hearts then we have to make our own values. Again, that's Nietzsche. Like, if you destroy God, which he pretty much said in The Death of the Madman, sorry, the, his poem, The Madman, which is, I'll probably read it here, because it's, it's, it's worth a read. Not right now, but at some point. He makes the case that 
that's the, the Christian moral order is the highest thing we've ever thought of. If you take God out of the equation that we thought of it, or the highest thing that's ever been discovered, there is nothing higher. And I would say the America, or at least Western Europe, if not leading on to America, is, is extreme evidence of that. So then we have to ask ourselves the question, like, if we deny the ultimate transcendent, and there's benefit to that, because then you're not accountable, you can do whatever you want, but then life also becomes meaningless, because there's no absolute end to it, and there's no purpose. You throw away the purpose when you throw away the meaning. And the middle doesn't make sense anymore. Why have a middle? Who cares about what happens? The ends justify the means. As long as I get the result I want, what I can do whatever I want to get it. And then I'm willing myself to get there. Well, now it turns out that elite, uh, psychologically that, that's not very helpful. And you can't live with other human beings if you don't trust them. Imagine if you woke up tomorrow and your lights didn't work. They didn't feel like doing their job, even though you paid them to keep your lights on. Well, that'd be a problem. There's a certain element of trust that's like so ingrained in our system. It's it's almost beyond belief. But one of the outworkings of that, even of self-consciousness, is when we examine each other properly, make room for new thought, and then the new thought grows up, or consciousness grows up, and does the same thing as it continues. You can't have choice without first life. Like, life has to be granted first. That's, that's one of my biggest issues with taking God out of, and life, out of the foundational document that has kept this country alive, which is like an anomaly according to constitutions. I think the average constitution life is like six years or something on the planet. Ours has been alive for like, is it 246? 247? That's a long time, dude. From 1776. Maybe I'm getting my math wrong there. So it's, it's something worthy of respect, if anything, worthy of study. What is Just to see why that's worked and to look and why legitimately, why legitimately why it works. And all this came out of a conversation with uh, my friend Carlos and I. He, I just stopped him. I'm like, hey, man, what's on your mind? Did you? He's like, I don't know. And he was listening to some like 70s, 60s, 70s music. Here's one of the reasons why it's good to pay attention or to talk about this stuff at the very least. I'm like, did you hear what Kamala Harris said last night? He's like, who? <laughs> An example of a person who's not paying attention to the pol to politics and maybe has other things going on, and that's not my place to judge. I mean, you can just, that's fine, but, like, why not talk about him? So one of the issues he brought to me, which is very common, is the, the whole rape and incest thing. You know, shouldn't kids, shouldn't people be allowed to have an abortion if it's rape or incest? And I'm like, well... You have to be careful with that, because any any time you answer, well, this evil thing happened, we better kill a child. Any time you go that route, that's not helping anything. That's hurting everything. It's 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 not picking things back up, and it's not an essence of forgiveness. I know that's this, and that's a hard one, dude. It's serious. But what of those things? With well, the should you like what on what grounds should you kill a child? Like there there, it seems to me like. Anytime you answer any question with "Let's kill the baby," that's that's a bad one. And then there's the example, like, well, maybe it's a zygote and it cannot can't uh, survive outside the womb. I'm like, well, I mean, my six year old can't survive by herself either. Should we live in a world where we can just have that as our principle on how we end life if we feel like it? And I will myself to power because I feel like it. There's nothing transcendent holding us together in a culture like a constitution. I don't know. So I know I know that kind of. That's kind of a deep thing to think about. And maybe you have some other thoughts, and I'd, I'd appreciate them if you do. Well, but it was, uh, it was, it was quite, it wasn't shocking, I guess, if she's speaking on Roe versus Wade, 50 year anniversary of it. And I hear that. It's just surprising to hear out loud when you, to hear it articulated when you know that's the message as is. Because you have to really. In my opinion, you have to put some blinders on the outside and not think about the consequences that happen if, if you're allowed to. Because when's the limit of killing life then if we're, if we're just allowed to? Luckily, we've been, I guess, correcting ourselves on that as a culture, which is a good thing, I believe. Anyway, 
think I'm going to play some Final Fantasy VI today, so thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Just a couple thoughts, and hopefully I'll be back tomorrow with some more. If you guys have any suggestions, I love ruminating over deep questions or ideas, please leave a comment below. I'd appreciate that. Thanks. Take care.